それではこれよりアーニー・ガンダーセン博士記者会見を始めさせていただきます Thank you very much for coming. お越しいただきます and, and to the Japanese people I would like to thank them、uh, I've had、um, a wonderful nine days here and I really appreciate the,、um, the hospitality I, I want to express my personal appreciation to、um, the staff that stayed behind at the Daiichi and the Daini sites.、Um, they are my personal heroes, and I think that、um, those people that stayed on the site during the accident、um, uh, deserve the thanks of the nation and the world. My background is I have a bachelor's and a master's in nuclear engineering. I was a licensed nuclear reactor operator and I was a senior vice president of a nuclear firm. I then became a nuclear whistleblower and it fundamentally changed my life. So, my personal journey began with being、uh, very supportive of nuclear power and thinking it could change the world.、It's、and then, when I became a nuclear whistleblower, I still believed in nuclear power. But I did not believe it was properly regulated. It was only after the Daiichi accident that I convinced myself that,、um, that people are not smart enough to operate nuclear power successfully. Rather than talk about the technical specifics of the accident, I'd like to give you my observations、um, of what.、Um, Of what I have realized in the last week since I have been here. I said on、uh, CNN back last year that the accident at、uh, Daiichi、uh, would take a very long time to clean up. And since I've been here, I think I've realized that、um, Tokyo Electric does not have the Management skill to do that successfully in any reasonable amount of time. By that, what I mean is that Tokyo, Electric,、um, Tokyo Electric's experience has been at operating nuclear reactors. But the problem Tokyo Electric faces at Daiichi is not about operating, it's about engineering problems that have never been faced. In the history of nuclear power. Let's set aside for a minute whether or not Tokyo Electric was good at operating nuclear power plants. The question is can they successfully、um, decontaminate and decommission the Daiichi site in any reasonable amount of time? I think the answer is no, they cannot. I met Uh, I had a presentation at the,、um, at the Diet office building last Friday. And after my presentation,、um, Tokyo Electric and Nissa、uh, also gave a brief presentation. When they were done, I was able to ask them directly、uh, questions for the very first time since the accident. And frankly, I was surprised and appalled by their responses. It was as if they were wearing, a term in the United States, it was as if they were wearing blinders. I was the senior vice president of an engineering firm, and、um, a, a creative engineering process is critical to the problems that are being faced at Daiichi because those problems have never been faced by anyone before. So, as I questioned Tokyo Electric, I realized that they were,、um, they were locked into a,、um, a, a paradigm that didn't allow them to consider the creative solutions that must be developed in order to successfully、uh, decontaminate and dismantle Daiichi. What I think needs to happen is that. Uh, the Daiichi site needs to be completely separated from Tokyo Electric. The employees should remain, 
but the management structure imposed upon them by Tokyo Electric must be replaced. Tokyo Electric can continue to do its power distribution and its power generation at its other uh, generating plants, but its attention should be focused on what it does well, which is generating power, and not on the, um, and not on the problems that it faces at the Daiichi site. Tokyo Electric is already nationalized because it has run out of money to, uh, to fix the Daiichi site. But what I'm suggesting is that the responsibility for the cleanup um, cannot be Tokyo Electric's because they just don't have the experience and the competence to do an adequate cleanup. So my main observation, number one, is that the, um, the effort at Daiichi should be completely divorced from um, uh, Tokyo Electric's management. Now, I don't think that NISA has been doing a great job either. So what I'm proposing is that um, a project management firm um, take over responsibility for the Daiichi site and report directly to the Japanese government. There are many um, competent management, project management firms in Japan, and um, uh, so I believe that the, uh, the management of the recovery at the Daiichi site um, can, be, um, can be controlled by a, um, by a large Japanese management firm. In the United States, we had this um, a similar situation at, at Three Mile Island. After that accident, a management corporation was put in to dismantle the facility because the utility that operated it didn't have the skills necessary to do it well. So while I don't think, um, I don't believe that NISA has the skills either. So the, the, the financial cleanup of the Daiichi site must come from the government of Japan. But the technical control of the effort uh, should not be NISA and should not be Tokyo Electric, but should be a project management firm chosen from within several excellent Japanese firms. I also realize that the Japanese people have almost no faith in Tokyo Electric nor do they have uh, much faith in, uh, in NISA. Because of that, the, the last thing I would propose is that a group of international experts work as an advisory group to the project management firm to make sure that there is a public oversight looking over their shoulder at all times. This should not be the International Atomic Energy Agency, the IAEA, should not. If you go up on, and Google IAEA, Article 2 of the IAEA Charter is to promote nuclear power. But I do believe there are international experts who are objective and who could regain the confidence of the people of Japan um, to provide that oversight function um, to make sure the Daiichi site is done as safely as possible and as quickly as possible. The next topic I'd like to talk about is that it appears to me that the Japanese government is already beginning to set the, um, to set the pattern to perpetuate nuclear power for as long as another 40 years. Yesterday I read a story that the, uh, the position of the government is that if we were to phase out nuclear power, the cost of electricity to the Japanese would double. I think that's wrong. I think there are um, approaches to generating electricity in Japan that, um, that will not raise the cost of, uh, of generating, of the, the cost of electricity. Um, that need to be considered um, as opposed to perpetuating nuclear power. Today I read a story that the, um, the um, LDP, that the LDP is now proposing the nuclear phase out occur 40 years from now 
in, um, in 2050. I don't believe that the, um, the cost estimates provided by the government and the uh, time for the phase out of nuclear power provided by the government are, um, are accurate. And tonight I'll, I will be, um, in my last speech of, the, um, of, of my visit here, um, we'll discuss the fact that um, uh, there are alternatives available to Japan in lieu of nuclear power. Not only are there alternatives available to Japan, but it also creates the opportunity for Japan to become an export leader in a technology that the rest of the world desperately needs. In the 20th century, um, we needed large central station power plants. But with the advent of the computer, um, we can distribute the generation with many small power plants instead of a few large ones. In the 21st century, we've gotten um, uh, the cost of solar power down dramatically. We've got the cost of wind power down dramatically. And we've also been able to tie them together with the electric grid in a way that we couldn't do last century. I use the example of a tree. The way electricity was generated in the 20th century was a tree with several very large leaves. In the 21st century, we can approach it differently the way nature does, a tree with thousands of small leaves. All of the pieces of this distributed generation are already available. Nothing has to be invented. The, uh, and Japanese companies are actually technology leaders in some aspects of this already. Mitsubishi, Hitachi, Toyota, and, and, and others already have all of the pieces to make this possible. It has never been um, integrated together before. So the challenge Japan faces and the opportunity Japan faces is to tie this together all these pieces together on a, on a national level. I have worked with and I went to college with many brilliant Japanese engineers and I know that the, uh, the technological challenges um, can be overcome with, um, with Japanese engineering skills and, and manufacturing competence. The thing that seems to be lacking in my observation is the political will to think differently. The proponents of nuclear power would like, would like to, um, to say, of course we need nuclear power, and of course we figured out a way to store the nuclear waste for a quarter of a million years. Those same proponents of nuclear will say that we can't have distributed generation or solar power because we haven't figured out a way of storing the electricity overnight. I'd like to suggest that if we can store nuclear waste for a quarter of a million years, we certainly can store electricity overnight. Nuclear power has been heavily subsidized and in fact is much more expensive than coal or renewables already when you factor in the subsidies. So what the crises that Daiichi has done has given Japan the opportunity to, um, to change the path that you are on and to um, become, uh, become self-sufficient internally, but also to become an export leader in a technology that the rest of the world desperately wants and desperately needs. So in closing, I just hope that the Japanese people can convince their own government to envision a future that is uh, different and safer than, um, than what you have experienced uh, in the Daiichi accident. Thank you. I can answer questions now. Okay. Um, okay, first off, um, 
I would I would like to compliment the Diet Committee. I th uh, I think they did an, an an excellent job on on their report. In the English of the Diet Committee report, they suggested that the problems at Daiichi were due to the uh, the Japanese um, hi hierarchical culture. I really don't think that's true. Uh, I experienced in the United States um, that we have a nuclear village that doesn't listen to outside opinion either. So I, I uh, yet in the American press, uh, the Diet Commission report was portrayed as the, uh, the Daiichi accident was uniquely Japanese and couldn't happen in America. Japan was unlucky, and America uh, could have also had an accident like Daiichi. Um, so I, I just really want the Japanese people to, to realize that um, this is not a, a problem unique to the Japanese culture. Um, okay, so I, I, I believe... Um, uh, I, I believe that the Diet Commission uh, did a very thorough job, though. And the question of oversight of the activities at Daiichi, um, I believe that international experts um, should be brought in uh, because they'll provide the, um, uh, the breadth of experience that's, that's lacking from within Tokyo Electric or NISA. The, um, but the structure that I'm proposing is different than what the diet, uh, what, what has been proposed so far, in that I am suggesting that Tokyo Electric be eliminated from the process of recovering uh, the Daiichi site. I don't believe they have the management skill set uh, necessary to, um, uh, to recover uh, the Daiichi site. So the Japanese government would be responsible for um, for paying for the recovery of the of the site, and the project management organization would replace Tokyo Electric's project management um, in um, in coordinating all of the activities that need to be accomplished. It's highly likely that that organization, that project management organization will be part of the nuclear village. So I do think that in order, to, um, uh, in order to show to the world and to show to the Japanese people that this is being done with their best interest in mind, um, a group of independent experts should, um, should provide oversight f for that, um, that project management organization that I'm suggesting. The problems that the Daiichi site is facing are, are greater than the skill set that any um, executive or any independent expert has. There's going to be um, more than one set of skills necessary to provide the oversight that's necessary to successfully clean up that site. Over the last year, I've been, um, via the internet, I've been talking to Japanese experts, and we have come up with great ideas, but we all know they won't be implemented by Tokyo Electric because they lack the vision and they lack the money to, to, um, uh, to successfully implement those ideas. So what I am proposing is a way to, um, well, the American term is to break the log jam. Uh, thank you. <laughs> um, the, the quick answer is um, no one knows for sure, even now, what caused the explosion at Unit 3 or 4. If the fuel gets hot enough, the control rods are coated with something called zircaloy, which, um, s which splits water into hydrogen and oxygen. The zircaloy absorbs the oxygen, then becomes zircaloy oxide.
and the hydrogen floats up and fills the rest of the building. On unit one, that hydrogen um, caused an explosion, um, which was um, dramatic, but um, the power of the explosion was um, was nowhere near as severe as the explosion in Unit 3. At Three Mile Island, we had a hydrogen explosion very similar to the hydrogen explosion at Daiichi Unit 1. Now, my comments at the, after the Daiichi Unit 3 explosion were that it was dramatically different than anything I had ever seen before. I don't think it takes an engineer to, uh, to make that same observation. The, the power of the shock wave at Daiichi Unit 3 was unanticipated by any, um, any engineer or any regulator throughout the world. There's no nuclear containment throughout the world that could win that can withstand the power of the shock wave that we saw on Daiichi 3. I think the, the important message is not how Daiichi exploded, but that it, it exploded in a way that, um, that shows that every nuclear plant in the world is in jeopardy. Cool. The um, Daiichi 3 explosion was not a simple hydrogen explosion. Yeah, rather than get into all the details, and, and there are different theories about what caused it, um, the, the important lesson for the world's nuclear community to, um, uh, to consider is uh, how did that happen um, and what can we do to prevent it from happening ever again? And no one is answering, is, no one is asking that question. I believe the Daiichi accident was caused by something called a prompt moderated criticality. Um, if you go up on the web and you Google um, B O R A X, Borax, you'll see that in the 1950s, um, uh, America ran a similar test that created a similar type explosion. I really, I don't per personally care if I'm right or wrong about what caused the explosion. But what I care about, what I care passionately about is that um, the world recognized that we had a shock wave that was so powerful that no containment would withstand it. And that issue needs to be resolved uh, moving forward. Electric would like to um, get to Unit 4, which is your your other question. Um, no one knows why Unit 4 exploded either. Tokyo Electric would like us to believe that gases from Unit 3 uh, ran through pipes into Unit 4 that caused the explosion. Um, that's possible, but I view it as unlikely because Unit 3 was full of holes from its explosion and there couldn't be um, a vehicle to push the radiation and, and hydrogen gas into Unit 4. So here we are 18 months after the Daiichi accident and um, we don't know how Unit 4 exploded and we don't know how Unit 3 exploded, yet we are starting nuclear reactors up despite that lack of knowledge. Okay. Um, everyone knows when the Chernobyl accident began but 30 years later, the Chernobyl accident still has not ended. Same is true at, da, at Daiichi. We know when Daiichi began, but um, there is no end in sight. Um, I don't know that the Americans would um, would do anything different than the, than the Japanese. Um, it is possible that in 30 or 40 years, um, using remote control technology, that the site could be um, 
dismantled completely. My, my fear is that um, if, um, if it is attempted, if dismantling the plant is attempted too quickly, the exposure to the people will be extraordinarily high. So to put a, a 30 year time limit on it um, might be achievable technically, but the uh, exposure to human beings, uh, to my mind, um, would be extraordinary and really not warranted. So the, uh, it's important that the site be dismantled as quickly as possible. That's but that could easily be more than one generation, unfortunately. I think that the, the goal, um, for the next two or three years, um, the nuclear fuel still needs to be cooled. After that, um, it's no longer necessary to water cool the nuclear fuel. But the, the nuclear containment will remain highly contaminated. And we already know that the, the um, nuclear containment is leaking and the radiation has gone beyond the nuclear containment into other buildings. So I think the, f the, the first priority, once cooling is no longer necessary, the first priority is to make sure that the radiation doesn't spread into the groundwater and into the ocean. I have theories on how to prevent that from occurring um, uh, with um, uh, a trench around the nuclear reactor uh, filled with a material called zeolite. But there are, very, uh, there are other uh, excellent alternatives um, to, to prevent the spread of the radiation as well. It gives me no great pleasure to admit that it could be as long as 100 years before this plant is dismantled. I wrote, um, I was vice president of a division that did um, nuclear decommissioning. And the problems that the Daiichi site is facing are um, are problems that have never been considered by, uh, by experts in the decommissioning field. The main source of radiation on the site is cesium, and cesium has a 30-year half-life. 30 years, half of it will be there, and in 60 years, a quarter of it will be there. It's so, <clears throat> 30 years is half, 60 years is a quarter, 90 years is one-eighth. So 90 years from now, there will be eight times less radiation on the site than there is today. So perhaps it's in the best interest of... Um, protecting the people that will have to dismantle this plant to wait for 60 or 90 years to get the exposure low enough that, um, uh, that thousands of people will not be overexposed. そこで現場で作業しなければならないわけですから、その方たちの一番の最善の保護を考えると、今から60年、90年待った方がいいのかもしれない。どうしても現場で被爆しなければいけない人たち、その数千人の人たちが無用に過剰な被爆をしないことを
My response makes me very sad. I, I don't want to admit that we're talking about three generations of Japanese having to face that problem. But、um, I, I do believe it's realistic. 今のような答えをしなければいけないことは私自身も非常に悲しくは思うんですつまり向こう3世代にわたって日本人の皆様がずっとこの問題に取り組まなければいけないというのは本当に悲しいと思うんですがどちらかといえばこの方が現実的だと思います、okay. ありがとうございました申し訳ございません終了時間が近づいてまいりましたので次の質問で最後とさせていただきますそれではご質問のある方挙手をお願いいたしますそれでは一番前の女性の方はい、こちら側の女性の方、マイクをお持ちいたします。質問をお願いいたします。あの、米国のライス大学と東京大学のマスコミの研究者のエリザベスマークスと申します。Um, 英語で質問します。Um, I'm curious what you think the、um, how you think the local reporting has been about this disaster、um, by the mainstream media.、Um, do you think they've sufficiently engaged?、Um, For example, your research, your insights into this topic,、um, as well as other perhaps outlying、um, insights into the, the problem and how to fix it.、Um, and additionally, do you think the foreign media remains committed sufficiently to covering this situation, or do you think they've、um, kind of prematurely abandoned sufficient reporting on it?、Um, actually, I have sort of a, a second part of the question, which is do you think there's a, a future for algae fuel? Um, algae, or, energy from algae、oh. in Japan. So, mass communication of Benkyo stay in the media and cancer small shimas. Mass new on the Kokunai no Shuru no Hodo Nitsi, the Otas Nishimas, the Gojishi no Kenkyo, Ariva, Zen Sekai, the Yona Iken, Ariva, Scotch Kawati, the Niken Gata to Stemo, Soko, Sweet, Torikun, the Jubuna, Horisaketa, Hodo, and Nasarete, Uto Moka, Ariva, Atarata Mono, Dakin, Hodo, and Natishma, Telto Moka, Tsma, Nihon Kokunai, Oke, Shuru no Hodo Nitsi, the comment on the Gashmas. The Dini, Nihon Igai no Kaigai no Media Nitsi, Mada Jubun, Nikon Monday, the Daisi, the Ate, 報道を続けなければいけないというコミットがあると思うか、それとも早い段階で海外メディアは報道をしなくなってしまっていると思うか、でまた全然違う質問なんですが、藻類、卵巣とかの藻、あれから燃料ができるという理論は先生は信じていますかと。The, um, the mainstream media in Japan、um, did a very poor job of,、um, of uh, informing the public Um, for the first three months of the,、uh, of the accident. I think at the level of the,、um, uh, the beat reporter, at the reporter on the street,、um, the, the, I think at the level of the average reporter,、um, um, They wanted to tell the story. I think, though, as the story worked its way up the management chain through editors and actually bosses of editors,、um, the, the true magnitude of the problem um, was, um,、uh, was downplayed. 他の記者はありのままを書きたいとしたんだと私は思います。だけどそれがその報道機関の上の方に行くと、例えばデスクとか編集とかを経由して、さらにその上にボスがいるわけですから、そうなると本当にいかに深刻であるかということを、なるべく控えめにしようという作用があったと思います。In the US, I was contacted as much as eight, I was, for the first three months of the, in the US, for the first three weeks of the accident, I was contacted about 18 times a day for, for, for three weeks by media outlets.、Um, and、um, that was TV, that was radio, and that was print. 1818, yes. Those stories never made the front page, but they did make it into print and radio and TV. Um, I think CNN did the best job, but even then, it was never, after the first day or two, it was never the very first story.、Um, okay. Given the accident didn't happen in America or Europe,、um, 
I think the foreign press did a reasonable job of, of covering it. I do think the foreign press has done a very poor job of um, continuing to cover the story um, and the, 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 the radiation issues related to Japan now are, are on nobody's um, the radar, not on anybody's. Yeah. The broader question and the more important question is what happened to the Japanese press? My, my personal experience is I was contacted frequently by reporters representing the mainstream media in Japan. None of those stories were uh, made it into print or television or radio in Japan. Not just hours and hours of my time, but days and days of my time were spent talking to Japanese reporters. None of which made it into, um, in, into uh, the reporting of the accident to the Japanese people. And I don't blame the reporters, but perhaps at the level of the editor or more likely at the level of the executives in the news firms, um, there was definitely uh, censorship applied in the Japanese press. On your issue of algae, uh, <laughs> I, I, I talk about biomass uh, in, uh, in my presentation tonight, uh, and uh, you know, perhaps it'll be there. But the, 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 um, there, uh, there are many alternatives. There's no single alternative that will solve the problem. But the solution shouldn't be a single alternative. Look what happened. We've had a single alternative for nuclear. And when a single alternative goes wrong, uh, it can lead to catastrophic events. そうto use the analogy of the tree again, if a tree loses a leaf or if a tree loses a limb, the tree continues to go on, distribute a generation. If, if um, we decide to um, look at algae and other forms and one form doesn't work, there are many other alternatives on the table, which is the, the beauty of a distributed system. Okay. Th thank you very much. Thank you very much.